The number of self-identified black farmers in the United States has dwindled over the last century, in part because of discrimination by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The agency is the economic backbone for most American farmers through its financing, insurance, and research and education programs. Special correspondent Fred DeSam Lazaro reports from Oklahoma, where despite roadblocks to federal aid, there's a concerted push to help black and other underserved farmers survive. I knew I was going to do this since I was seven years old. First time I pretty much got on a tractor with my uncle, and I know how to, I love agriculture. Wouldn't give it up for nothing in the world. Did you know how tough it was going to be? Nope, I do now. For 50-year-old Leroy Brinkley, self-described hermit, this 80-acre farm with nearly three dozen beef cows is his comfort zone. A labor-intensive, full-time job, but it's one he has to finance by working at least as long off the farm as a heavy equipment mechanic and truck driver. Why isn't farming by itself a full-time occupation? Because, you know, the work certainly is full-time, right? Yeah, the work's there, but the money's not. Uh, economically, I don't see this working. It's by itself. When he began farming three decades ago, Leroy Brinkley tried to get a loan from the USDA. But at the local office, he says, he was turned down and turned off by the experience. I bought the papers in, and it was just no support. I could tell from the get-go I wasn't going to get help. But I tried it anyway, trying to be nice, polite. I still didn't get the support that I needed from it, so I couldn't bother with it anymore. An experience all too familiar to black and minority farmers. We've clearly been dumped on worse than any other race in this country by our own federal government. John Boyd Jr. is president of the National Black Farmers Association and a fourth-generation Virginia farmer. He says African Americans have been systematically excluded from programs that enable farmers to acquire land and build wealth and unfairly targeted for foreclosure. The government has to start living up its commitment and they have to start treating black farmers with dignity and respect. The government has settled two class action lawsuits in the past 25 years. Socially disadvantaged producers were discriminated against by the United States Department of Agriculture. Uh, we, we know this. And in 2021, the Biden administration included billions in debt relief for minority farmers in its American Rescue Plan. But lawsuits from white farmers claiming reverse discrimination held up the program. In response, Congress repealed it last August, instead setting aside money in the administration's Inflation Reduction Act, now for so-called distressed borrowers. There are a lot of opportunities out there under this administration that a lot of people are not taking advantage of. Willard Tillman's organization is a resource that connects minority farmers to complex government farm programs. He says there's a rare opportunity to bring these farmers into a system from which they felt alienated. If they don't understand it, they ain't going to mess with it. So that's where we come in. They don't trust the government. They trust me. I don't take dirty water to them. If it's good for them, I tell them, yeah. If it's not good for them, I tell them, no. Survive with these cows. With the help of Tillman's group, Leroy Brinkley enrolled in a program last year called CARE, Conservation and Agriculture Reach Everyone. Those blackbirds, you see how they started? It paid him $70 an acre for 40 acres, which he used to partner with a local elementary student to bring goats to graze on the invasive species. We're going to try to get this covered with a cover crop. This year, he's participating again, getting support to plant more grass for his herd to graze on. $1,500 in seed. Yeah. I ought to get it. A little time. Yeah, yeah. your time. Sarah Blaney runs the Oklahoma Association of Conservation Districts, which administers the admittedly modest K program. Our specific program is smaller, but our hope is that this is maybe the first introduction to that process and, and makes them a little bit more comfortable with the idea of working with government so that when they're ready to go apply for those bigger contracts, they know the right questions to ask, they know what their rights are. A more immediate challenge for Brinkley is the months-long drought across Oklahoma, which has almost tripled hay prices this year. So it costs you about 700 bucks per week to feed this group. Yeah, this is very expensive this year. 
Some of his expenses have been offset by a $50,000 loan he received through the native Creek Nation, where he's an enrolled member, money that was guaranteed by the USDA. It didn't grow me any. It just kind of took the curves off some things. Maybe the next time, the next go around when this operation is up fully and running, it may make a difference. The Black Farmers Association's Boyd applauds efforts like those in Oklahoma, but he says the money now available is a fraction of what would have come to minority farmers under the debt relief program that was repealed. We were promised 120 uh, percent debt relief and we didn't get it. It looks like to me every time black farmers are promised something in this country, we don't get it. The USDA declined an interview request, but in a statement to PBS NewsHour said, given court injunctions that tied its hands, the goal was to get relief to farmers quickly, adding that the Inflation Reduction Act provided $3.1 billion that will allow USDA to work with distressed borrowers and for those farmers that have suffered discrimination by the USDA farm loan programs, Congress allocated $2.2 billion. But Boyd says the government broke a promise and a contract with minority farmers, and he's suing the USDA. When they changed the language to distress, it opened it up, and uh, white farmers were able to get uh, their loans and stuff current. Uh, there are far more white farmers than there are black farmers in this country. We're less than 1%. We are facing extinction. Back in the early 1900s, black Americans owned some 16 million acres of farmland, a number that was down by 90% by the turn of the 21st century. Here in Oklahoma, there once were more than 50 all-black towns built around agriculture. Clearview is one of just 13 that survive today. My family moved here in 1902 when the town was established. My dad had a 40-acre farm. This is where I'll stay until I pass away. Shirley Nero and her husband Donnie both had careers as educators, Donnie eventually becoming president of Connors State College. But they were both pulled to return to this tiny town 80 miles east of Oklahoma City. Population about 50. Most of those people that settled here were freedmen. When Oklahoma became a state in 1907, the first bill they passed was a Jim Crow law. And this was a place of freedom they could express themselves, they could actually support themselves. As the years went on, the population and black-owned land eventually began to dwindle. Our school got down to about 32 in the high school, and then that's when they closed it in 64. The Neros built their house and now breed cattle here, a rare reverse migration, they admit. We see so many of the young people Today, their parents or grandparents have had land for so many years, but that almighty dollar speaks, and when it does, they're going to move, and the farms are going to be lost. And when you lose the land that you have, and you now find yourself in a condominium somewhere, the value is not, doesn't equate. For his part, Leroy Brinkley is open to participating in more farm programs, but based on experience, says he's not counting on anyone but himself. I've got a little piece of a home, and I'm satisfied. You know, had to move some hurdles out of the way, but I'm making a go of it. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Fred DeSan Lazaro in Haskell, Oklahoma. And Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota. And there is more online, including a look at the lives of black farmers through a photographer's lens. You can see those images at pbs.org newshour.